This time I'd like to start the open workshop. It is 510. I'll take a roll call. Trustee Burke. Here. Trustee Kasaya. Here. Trustee Keegan. Here. Trustee Spokane. Here. Trustee Watson. Here. Trustee Wilback. Here. Vice President Julio. Here. President Pilar. Here. First up, I'd like to uh, introduce the superintendent. Uh, you all have a handout uh, on our opening plan, and I'll turn the meeting over to the superintendent. It's right here. Yeah, right, you all have it. Second mm -hmm. right. <clears throat> minute, should I uh, use a mic or am I good? I'm good? I think we're good. You good? Yeah. We're good. Okay. All right. I'll just stand up. So this is a document that was shared with the community, and we have this, our road back or road forward plan, and it covers as well as Executive Order 251, <coughs> excuse me, 251, the uh, Department of Education has released recommendations, or the and with, along with the conjunction of the Department of Health, the State of New Jersey. And we're going to follow as many of those recommendations as possible. The executive order, however, is a mandate. And most importantly, in our plan specifically, that this is a mandate for our district that all visitors to our buildings, students, faculty, shall wear it is mandatory masking requirements for all individuals in public, private, and rural schools, etc. In accordance with the executive order, uh, we will be starting the school year with mandatory mask wearing for everyone. The Mayo School District will remain open unless required to close as part of a state of emergency by the governor of New Jersey. Some of those, and, and this is the question that people have, uh, it, it's really come up quite often in reference to the masks and wearing of the masks. Specifically, it's listed as you do not have to wear a mask if when doing so would inhibit the individual's health, such as when the individual is exposed to extreme heat indoors. Now I've got a lot of questions about what is extreme heat? What is the definition of extreme heat? So with that in mind, you can look at FEMA, ready.gov, and I'll kind of explain what we're doing with, uh, in reference to extreme heat. Um, according to FEMA, the definition is uh, there, there is hot, and then there is hot with an exclamation point. Extreme heat is a period of high heat and humidity with temperatures above 90 degrees for at least two to three days. In extreme heat, your body loses, uh, or in extreme heat, your body works extra hard to maintain normal temperature, which can lead to death. Extreme heat is responsible for the highest number of annual deaths among all weather-related hazards. And that's according to uh, ready.gov heat. The CDC it defines extreme heat as summertime temperatures that are much hotter and more humid than average. Because some places are hotter than others, this depends on what's considered average for a particular location at the time of the year. Humidity and muggy conditions can make it seem hotter than it really is. That's according to the CDC. What we'll do here is, we'll be smart about it, we'll follow all the above, we'll consult with the local health department, I consulted with them yesterday, we'll go over some of this stuff. Um, and we'll make informed decisions of the best interest of our students and employees. If the local schooling centers are open in Bayonne, we would also consider this an extreme heat emergency. Um, so the, the district will consider local conditions and extreme heat. That could change. I mean, we could wake up one morning and it's just extremely hot, and we'd have to know the fire community that uh, masks would be optional in those areas where there is no air conditioning, uh, et cetera. But again, it's going to be on a case-by-case -case basis. Right now, checking the weather for the next 15 days, I think we'll be okay with, uh, with no extreme heat emergencies. But as you know, that can and will change. Yes, sir? That, that can not be your fault? I'm sorry? Even all the other factors, it'll still be your fault? Yes. And like I said, I'll be consulting with the uh, local Department of Health uh, and the weatherman. Uh, when, this in, when the individual has trouble breathing, is unconscious, incapacitated, or otherwise unable to move their face coverings, when a student's documented medical condition or disability as reflected in an individual education plan, IEP, or educational plan for student 504, um, includes the use of face covering, when an individual's age is under two, when an individual is engaged in activity that cannot be performed while wearing a mask. 
such as eating, drinking, or playing an instrument that would be obstructed by face covering. So therefore, when students are eating, they will eat and then place their face mask back on. When the individual is engaged in high intensity aerobic or anaerobic activity, and when a student is participating in high intensity physical activity, such as physical education class in a well-ventilated well location, and be able to maintain physical distance of six feet from all other individuals. And when wearing a face mask creates an unsafe condition in which to operate equipment or execute a task. Uh, next, we'll talk about uh, vaccination. It is Executive Order 253 requires that all individuals employed in a school building must provide proof of vaccination or submit to testing minimum one or two times weekly. We'll enforce that in this district. We'll collect that. We're putting together a mechanism to collect those vaccination results. We can, um, and we are asking for those who are vaccinated 12 years and older for their vaccination status. Um, right now, the mechanism is for our classroom teachers, the first point of entry, to get that information. But we're working with technology to put together a mechanism for submission of that. And we are looking to access, correct me if I'm wrong, um, this is a superintendent at COPET, but it's uh, registering on a website that the state of New Jersey has that has all the data for vaccinations. Um, all of us, if you've been vaccinated, your information will be uh, in this portal at the uh, state of New Jersey. Um, so that covers uh, vaccination. Students are not required to be vaccinated at this time. We continue to study that, continue to, um, you know, see what we can do. But right now, they, you know, 12 and older are for vaccination. Um, if a student re uh, refuses to wear a mask for any other uh, of the aforementioned choices, we would uh, institute, you know, just we're, we're, our goal is not to suspend and start start disciplining students, it's to kind of just get them to go with the program of wearing a mask. Um, so we'll do everything we can in our power to get them to comply with the mandate. Um, and if we have to, we'll, we'll speak to the parent individually on a case-by-case on -case basis. Um, masks are required on buses. Students can bring their own masks. We have made arrangements for multiple, a lot of masks uh, and hand sanitizer. Uh, meals, meals will win if possible. Desks and chairs will be arranged in such a way that they're uh, three to six foot in distance. Um, however, as we all know, based on the average size and scope of our buildings, that sometimes that's going to be rather challenging and difficult, but we are keeping all Former protocols involved, such as plexiglass, air purifications, um, our the air, air filters in uh, the district. Everything that we've done before, we still do with the placards in the hallway, um, you know, just having hand sanitizer everywhere. So that, that will remain. We're also putting in uh, a, damn, what is it? It's a help system, a, a desk where our Buildings can quickly alert maintenance to any issues that are out there that they see that bring get brought to their attention by the um, teachers, and then the system will alert our uh, custodial staff via what is that like text or uh, it's an it's an alert system that goes to them. So we can't have right um, breakfast, snacks, and lunch. Snacks will be eaten in the classroom uh, in our community schools for lunch in our grades from pre-K to grade eight. Students will sit together with their class or their cohort. When if possible, they can eat outside. We've, we've ordered uh, picnic tables, so we've got a lot of them coming to all of our schools. Something we've never had here before, but they're, they're, they're the, uh, what are they, the, they're the, the metal ones with the, the rubber cord. Yes, um, with the rubber on, so they'll be able to have lunch outside. Weather permitting, um, that's, that's a, a, I mean, you know, I just haven't seen those in any of the schools, so we're, we're, we're gonna do that as well. Um, our teachers can have lunch with the students in, in the classroom and the cohorts. Our teachers, our teachers through our um, ESS funds, uh, will be able to provide them eight students in their classrooms uh, for lunch. Uh, that way, they can eat with them. Uh, again, it's about all about choices. We'll open up our uh, gymnasium classrooms uh, when available. We also well, want to remind our community that you do have a policy that they can go home for lunch. A parent, guardian, could pick their child up, take them to lunch. Uh, what we don't want to do is have a revolving door of kids just coming and going at all the diverse uh, dates and times. So we, we would ask that parents 
Uh, if they want to take their child out to lunch, you can take them out for a week. Um, and they can stay on a uh, remote lunch program. Uh, but, but we think that's a, that's a good uh, option too. Is that, that option will also be available at the high school where students can, uh, with you know, parental permission, leave high school and go to lunch and come back. Um, but again, it's all in an effort to kind of relax the uh, capacity of the lunchrooms. Um, we will discourage students from sharing meals. Again, uh, always thinking cleaning, maintaining health, healthy facilities, including ventilations. Uh, with our added security, we'll have our doors open uh, to increase airflow in the classroom. The, um, every building is equipped with an electric static sprayer uh, to clean contact surfaces. We'll continue to do that. And like I said, uh, the plexiglass. As far as constant, uh, vaccinated and unvaccinated and quarantining, we have it listed in our policy. One of the one of the most important things is that we work with the with, with the Department of Health in doing contact tracing. And what does that actually mean? And ladies and gentlemen, we, we're all very cognizant of what's in the news in reference to the coronavirus and the different variants of same. And because of that. The quarantining and isolation of individuals, that's going to change. I, once I put this out, on, uh, we just got another update for public health recommendations for implementing COVID screening from the Department of Health. So the last line in this, this we, we reserve the right for any additions, corrections, deletions, and changes to the policy. It's going to constantly evolve. Um, right now, we've just started talking about in-school testing. And what would that look like? So um, our accountant, uh, Mr. Jack Phillips, we're actively looking for to do testing in the Bayonne School District. So as soon as we release this, we, we're, we're just constantly evolving. But I, I want to make it perfectly clear that we're evolving for the betterment and for the safety of everybody, not just our students, uh, but you know, just equally as important as all, all our employees. So we're, we're, we're looking to do that. But right now, we do know that the city does provide testing um, down at the Bayonne Museum. We've been sharing that information with our community. And we have down at VETS, uh, we have the vaccine being offered. Um, we do cover if you're, what happens if you, you do not need to quarantine, if you're vaccinated and you're not exhibiting any symptoms, pardon me, and if you're vaccinated, student or employee, and you are positive, you'll need to leave school. Um, we will make arrangements and accommodations to educate those who have to leave for quarantine. Um, Dr. Gagnon and his team has put, we, we still have Schoology. Some students have, are going out on home instruction because of their some you know, underlying medical conditions. Um, but we are working with getting, making sure our students don't lose any educational time. And that could be include up to uh, the use of Schoology or the use of um, uh, home instruction. <clears throat> we also know that when some of our students, when we talk about a classroom being quarantined in the K through pre K through grade eight, that would be rather easy. It's one grade, they, it's one group of students, they stay together, and we've got to quarantine them. That's easy. In the high school, it's, much, it's going to be much different because that group could be in a biology class and or it could be in any class, but just as an example. And then that class would have to quarantine, but then they would be, they're all over the place. They don't actually follow each other to other classes. So a mechanism is in place for that. And it's going to be school G or home instruction. It depends on the cohort um, and how many students we're talking about. But again, um, and that, you know, the teachers, schools, in the plan, we also talk about, this could be a, an individual classroom. It could be a cohort of individuals. It could be a grade level, a floor of a school, it could be a school. So we just have to be prepared for whatever is thrown our way and we have to adapt, improvise, and, and, and overcome that challenge. Um, we will work in conjunction with our health department when students are ill, when the district observes an increase in number of persons with COVID, there is a COVID positive or other factors not listed here above. So we already have students that have COVID. We already do. We've already been emailed and we know that students are positive already and they're not coming to school. Um, 
So, ladies and gentlemen, the, the this is real. We're doing the best that we can. These are not students that have been on our school property, but it's you know, it's this is not going well. Um, we do go over an exclusion contacts uh, criteria for those who have symptoms. Um, exposed or fully vaccinated and have no COVID symptoms, our remote instruction, we are bound by the 180 day requirement for school, so therefore we will continue to have school even if the district were to, if, and then, you know, I mean, even if we were to actually close, um, which I don't see happening, but you know what, at this point, we just have to be prepared for everything. And I want to thank Dr. Dagnew because we brought, we brought Schoology and it was a challenge as everything is. And, you know, that's our, that's our online learning platform. And uh, we'll have that if we need to uh, use that. Um, diagnostic screening and testing. We still are going to have our at-home screen health questionnaire that we that will be emailed every morning to everyone to take a look at. We'll still have our temperature check uh, when we enter the building. Well, that wasn't a requirement as we, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but that'll, that, that we're, we're just going to follow all of these recommendations. Um, we will cooperate with city officials, provide vaccine clinics uh, to both the district and the resident community. There'll be appropriate accommodations for children with disabilities. Our special education department will continue to work with our parents and students, at which they currently are. Uh, the continuity of educational services will continue to do that. Um, academic support, emotional support. I think we've made uh, some great strides in hiring a lot of uh, um, uh, counselors and uh, child study team members, guidance counselors, to uh, help with our students. Um, we were, we were, uh, in my opinion, understaffed, and we made some great strides. I'm still continuing to do so. Oh, that's another story. Our athletics and co-curricular activities are, will follow those of the, of the uh, athletics. We'll continue to follow the NJ uh, SIAA. Um, we'll, we'll continue to follow that. We'll, we'll follow their guidelines as well as the city, Department of Health, and anything else you know that's, that, that 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 we're. Uh, told to do or uh, required to do, but we'll continue to follow all those guidelines. Travel. Um, there are no travel advisories in the state of New Jersey at the time I wrote this, and uh, there aren't any now, I don't believe. Uh, special COVID-related rules as opposed to employees, they expired on December 31st, 2020. Oh, and like I said, the travel ex uh, restrictions expired on May 17th, 2021. We do have COVID testing. We have a, um, uh, like I said, the Bayonne Museum. They did put out their hours. We just, I think we just shared that this afternoon. Um, and most importantly, it, uh, not most importantly, but unfortunately, this whole plan is predicated upon it's going to change, it continues to change, and it continues to evolve. The, um, uh, some of the important things are, like I said, uh, we're, we're um, you know, we're, we're, Unfortunately, we find ourselves in this position, and fortunately, we'll do the best we can with all the information that we have, and as we try to come back as safe as possible. And we'll keep you posted. We'll see what uh, by next month, by next quarter, where we're at. As it continues to evolve. Um, um, that is it. Go ahead. Can I ask a question? Sure. So, as of right now, testing is not being offered. We're looking for the option of offering testing in, in house, right, the building, right? For our yes. staff. Yes. Individual uh, testing, not even cohorts. Right, right, individual testing, as of right now. Yeah. Um, how many times will staff have to be tested per week? One to two. One or two. One, two, one or two, yeah. Okay, yeah. so are we opting with one, but that, that's what I see. One, one or two, they get one, but they get two, but they have to get at least one. All right, so the, so the two is optional? Yes. Okay, all right, because I, I think one that that... One or two. Right, I think that was a little bit of a confusing thing that I, I, I read, you know, I thought that we were mandating two, it's, so it's one yep. mandated, yeah. but you yeah. can get up to two. following exactly what the governor put out. Okay. One or two. No, in the mandate, the governor says one or two. I know it says one or two, but I was asking what we were following, one or two. So I guess one mandatory, two optional. Correct. Fair. Okay, just wanted to clarify that. Um, Florida and Texas have some of the highest rates in the nation. As far as COVID transmission, um, I think there is actually a travel ban in Florida. As far as quarantine, can we just look into that? I think Florida and Texas are on our list of there might be a possible quarantine on the way back, just because their positivity rates over five. So if we just look into that, this would uh, make me feel better. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank thank you, uh, Superintendent.
Thank you, Superintendent. Um, next up, I put out a handout. Um, Dr. Degen and the Curriculum Committee the other day met. Uh, you're hearing a lot of talk about critical race theory. This is a handout from New Jersey School Boards Association. Might bring you up to date on exactly how you might answer this if, uh, if pressed by constituents. Next up, I handed out uh, and we sent uh, an email out today. Uh, and the reason we, we put this in at the last minute is this is the policy update that I sent out. And you're going to use the one that I handed out that has the colored front page. Okay, and the reason we're doing this tonight, uh, per, uh, policy committee met at 430 to go over it. Uh, as you see, the last is the road forward COVID-19 health and safety. Superintendent thought it would be good if we can get this done and introduced tonight. We could pass it to September meeting and it would coincide with the plan that we just put out. So uh, everyone has a copy to take home. If you have any questions, basically, uh, it's all mandated. It's all mandated. There's no no, yeah. no no options in there. Nothing. It's all mandated by by, yeah. by state law. So I was reading it earlier. There's some interesting updates. Yes. Okay, yeah. Just there some is. interesting updates. Um, they're they're abolishing a lot of it actually. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the one thing I've uh, actually saw that they're abolishing the remote learning option for families. Yeah, I mean, it's, so uh, that has to be, but that's all state mandated. Yeah, we have, right? we have we, it's not something we're doing, it's something the state's right. pushing on us. I was reading all 83 pages of it. Yeah, I, I didn't get quite. Um, so it's there. If anyone has a, uh, a question, they can ask their fellow trustees that are on the committee, or you're welcome to call myself or Dr. Degman. Well, we're voting next month on it. Not yeah, now. of course. This is just Stand the introduced tonight. Yeah. Thank you, uh, President Bellotto, for clarifying that. Yesterday? Early. Yeah. I mean, yeah, earlier, earlier today. Because no, when I received the email at 10 a.m., I lost. Yeah. I, I thought we were you know, doing this tonight, and I was like, I haven't read all these yeah. pages. So, uh, I'd like to go to our agenda, just to give you some updates. Um, on approval of minutes and communication, you'll see the last four are new resignations that came in since I sent the packet home to you. Uh, is there, a, can I have a move and a second on communication? I'll move. I'll second. Great. Uh, I'd like to just point out really uh, a few resolutions on curriculum and instruction. You'll see I handed out an A14. Uh, if you look at A4, approval of individual school parent involvement policy, usually A14 is a resolution that, that goes with that one. Unfortunately, I didn't pick up that we were missing it, so we're adding it in. Um, any other comment, Dr. Jackson? That, that's just the district policy. Yeah. yeah. That, you'll find out in the Strauss estimate. Yeah. But we do it because we get audited by the feds, so we do it by resolution. Uh, on finance, I'd like to have you take a look at, I handed out B33. It's approval of memorandum of understanding. This was gone over at the finance committee. Uh, Mr. Castle, maybe a minute on this, just to give the other board members an idea of what we're doing. Sure. So this is just an understanding that the board will be eligible to hire union workers temporarily, if needed, to do some union-related jobs. It's not something that we have to do. It just gives us the ability to do for larger construction projects. Myself, uh, uh, Chairperson Eden, and President Bellato. This is a win win for the district. Not only is it a cost saving measure for us, it's actually putting union workers to work. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's good for us financially and it's pro community. And we still, and Rich is voting on allowing us to call them for Correct. To call them for yeah. If we have individual jobs, those will still come to the board and we have to approve them. Correct. It doesn't mean we have to do it, it's just one of those things. Doesn't mean we have to use right. it. Right. We just have that option now. Okay, next up is uh, personnel, and I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Kopaz uh, for C2, or harassment, <coughs> intimidation, and bullying. Thank you, Dr. Mehta. We have zero incidents of harassment, intimidation, and bullying this reporting period. Thank you. Great. And then the only addition I have <laughs> is if you go to C33, um, 
once again, you know, if I do get something for a student, I'll add it in at the last minute. And this is for online trading for uh, our disabled pupils. Then maybe a minute on we could tell the trustees what it's about. The, are you talking about our level readers? The yes, last thing that, the yeah. uh, RAS Plus yeah, online. Yeah, the RAS Plus, those are our level readers. Um, SAVAS is the, uh, the district is utilizing that as well. These are for our special, our students with disabilities level reading um, on Dawn. So. Great, so unless there's any other questions on any of our resolutions, Madam President, that is all I have for this evening. Exactly We're out here. We're done with our open workshop, folks. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to adjourn the open workshop, and we're going to go into a closed session here uh, for legal personnel and negotiation items. It is 535. We're going to take five.